welcome to our first inaugural Shark Tank at CP Evolution. Now let me tell you a couple of the rules and what's gonna happen today. The first thing is, thanks to our friends at Sensorium, we have Bloody Mary, so if you had a rough night last night, feel free to run on up and get one. In fact, I think I might need a sip now, so I'm just gonna get my, uh, my first sip out of the way. Uh, oops, thank you. I'm getting an assist here, thank you. So I'm just saying, very nice, right? Little sip, gonna have some fun. Ooh, yummy. Ooh, spicy. I just want you guys to know it's a little spicy. All right, I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna have some fun. All right, so here's my rules. Rule number one, you may pitch a fit as a shark. You may be difficult as a shark. You may be challenging as a participant. No poopy tinkle language. Do you know what I mean by poopy tinkle language? My kids used to call it that. So we're recording. We want people to be able to have this recording for their company to use to pitch their products further. So you will ruin it if you swear. Uh, there's an exception to this. Erwin, where are you? You can swear in Dutch because nobody will understand you. Um, you're good. You're good. You can do it. So here's the rest of our rules. Our participants are going to come up. They have five minutes to pitch. I will stop them at the end of the five minutes. I will also stop them if they're boring. So you have five minutes unless you're boring, and then you have no minutes, okay? So please be engaging, please be interesting. Sharks, you will have about six or seven minutes to ask your questions. Your questions are designed for one reason and one reason only, to decide who you're gonna invest in. Now because we're not on TV and you're not Kevin O'Leary, your investment could be something like, we're gonna have you out to our offices and we have, you know, the most people in the industry in that area, whatever you want to be, I would encourage our sharks, go early, go fast. The first shark to the tank usually wins. And finally, I'd encourage the audience to boo, hiss, clap, stand up, have a drink, do whatever it would do that a live studio audience would do to make it fun. So if you're here with somebody that's presenting, do not be afraid to be super loud, try to get a wave going, whatever, because you're not on camera. You can even pick your nose. No one will know. Sharks, participants, you cannot. Okay? So if we're clear on the rules, here we go. We're going to introduce our first shark. All right. Well, so I'm Janet Shines. I probably should have said that. CEO of the JS Group. And our first shark is Rick Becker, CEO of X. I never can do it right. XS1. Welcome, Rick, to the stage. The audience is a little sleepy. The Bloody Marys have not kicked in. Okay. Our next shark is Adam Nunzen from TBI. Adam's conveniently wearing a little lapel pin that says TBI. In case you need to see him later, you should look for that. Heather Murray, odds favorite from Tech Data to be the meanest shark. That's the first bet. Tied with Karen Fields from Microcorp, the other odds on favorite to be the toughest shark on the panel. We'll see, but I think one of these ladies is going to give somebody a hard time. We have Eric Cole from Ingram Micro. Eric, welcome. Did you for, so like the guys? Did you forget your high heels or like what happened? Oh, nice. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure. I thought we talked about it. And then we've got Richard Murray from Taloris. Welcome, Richard, to the stage. Does he or does he not have a Taloris pin on? He does. Well played. And finally, but not, certainly last but not least, Eric Simpson from ericsimpson.com. Welcome, Eric, to the stage. Eric is also a slight odds-on favorite to be difficult as well. So we'll see. It's all in the stage. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Sharks, are you clear on your role? Yeah. Yeah. Challenging, yeah. funny, pithy. I can also cut you off. Okay. <laughs> I think we are. Our first participant, Dante, where are you? All right, we're going to bring up Dante from Ring Logics. Now, here's the rules, Dante. You have five minutes on the clock. The clock will begin to count down. I'm going to explain how clocks work because apparently 40% of millennials don't know how to read one. So I just want to make sure. He's handing out some graft. We don't know what this is. Um, they Somebody appear to be masks Dante of about some. My paintball gun. Yeah, some kind of paintball or something. Oh, I get one too. All right, I'm going to step aside. Your five minutes begins. Please advance his slide. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dante White. I'm a channel sales director of Ring Logics. Sharks, you might want to put on the goggles. This is a shark tank, and I'm here to slaughter the competition. 
We're a white label provider for MSP's Interconnects VARS that allows them to do everything from a single pane of glass, including branding it in their own. But let's take a look at the platform. All right, so like I said, we allow every single provider to do their own business the way they want to. They control every aspect of the sale from quotes to activation to moves, ads, and changes all from a single pane of glass. It's got automated billing. It's got automated taxing to it, SIP trunks, hosted PBX, et cetera. Anything that you would expect from the natural PBX market today. How are we going to get you there? Well, as our program is developed and developing even more, we have a full team that just supports the partners. Everything you do and all your resellers does comes directly from them, and we support them on the back end. SIP trunking porting, there's transparent RTCP to protocols and SIP transfers, all that stuff that you can do troubleshooting for. And lastly, the sky is the limit, or is no longer the limit, I should say. So most consumers today are buying online. There's no mistake about it. Anybody that's on the stage here in the audience, you go online, you click on something, you buy it. That's the way people want to do it, and it's going that way even further. So we're putting you back in the driver's seat. We're allowing you to do that so you don't have to rely on the other providers, waiting on your quotes, waiting on the engineers, waiting, waiting, waiting. You could do it there. Your customers can do it there. How many times has it happened where you go into the office, your customer's already engaged with the vendor, and you're like, hey, I sell that, right? And then you have to battle back and forth. We negate all of that. Thank you, everybody, so much for your time. I appreciate it. And who's ready to invest? Now, remember, you can say, I'm out. So I'm just giving the coaching for the first and only time to the Sharks. If you're out, you may say, I'm out, and do something rude. And for those that aren't out, you can ask questions. OK, go. Well, Dante, I'm interested. At, uh, I want to ask you a couple questions, though. So X is one is a is a meshing together the master agency and the, and the distributor, ma mass distributor, right? Um, how far do you take this through on your portal? I mean, is provisioning included? And could I incorporate that into my platform so that rather than my agents and their customers going to your platform, I can go to mine and every, manage everything through there? Correct. Provisioning is in the platform for the reseller, also for the customer as well. So just as any other UCAS uh, product out there, customers have their own portal. Resellers also have their own portal. Everything that the customer sees is going to be your logo or your reseller's logo, though. So they don't know RingLogix exists, right, from the quotes to the URL, et cetera. And they have full control of it. Uh, you don't need multiple portal logins like you might need with other providers. As soon as you log in, all your customers are there. You go right into their PBX and do anything you need. I would advise you not to say just like any other UCAS product. That's probably not a good thing. Good tag. advice. Um, okay, good, good news. I'm listening. Dante, tell, us yes, about your, tell us about your distribution model. Direct, indirect, DISTI. Are you selling direct? Is there channel conflict? Great question. Zero channel conflict. Or, yeah, zero direct channel conflict. We're 100% channel. Uh, as of the moment, we are going straight to the MSP's VARS interconnects, so that's why we wanted to come up here. I've been with the company since July, and the first thing out of my mouth when I interviewed was, we need to go talk to masters. Okay. 
So my question is, is it a two-tier? Because I don't want a MSP or a VAR to go directly to you and get the exact same product that, I'm, that you're going to give me. So tell me about your two-tier program. How is that going to work? Sure. So we don't have a two-tier program set up at the moment. Ooh, that's bad for me. <laughs> that's I'm bad out. for me. Uh -oh. But we could develop one leave. together. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a deal breaker for me. If a, a bar or a solution provider, MSP, can come direct to you and get the exact same thing I can get them, what benefit is it to me? What, what benefit do I provide for my partner? Correct, and that's kind of the uh, the genesis for being on stage here today is to develop that, right? Maybe we stop doing it directly to the partners themselves and exclusively sell through Master and Disney channels. Well, that's a big ask. So, you know, in terms of coming up here and presenting your product, not coming to the table with a two-tier distribution model and asking one of us to help you build that is a really big ask, and for that reason, I'm out. I, I'm out also for the exact same reason. It's too expensive, and to your point, just like any other hosted provider, there's enough of you out there. Yeah, Dante, if I'm gonna promote you to my channel of 25,000 MSPs, mm -hmm. you've got to have that core component. You know, what's in it What's in it for us doing all that recruitment work for you? So, unfortunately, I'm out. For the right margin profile, I'll do almost anything. 70% um, <laughs> plus. You're too easy. And, I mean, technically, it could be branded under, you know, Talaris, TBI, how, Microcore. How many active channel partners do you have today? Uh, I would have to get those numbers back to you because I haven't been privy to that information as of yet, but I can absolutely but follow up on that. you channel sales. Uh, yeah, as of July, I just started I'm in. out. <laughs> Come on, man. I was at your party last night. I'll tell you something. Look, it, it, it's, it's a cool video. You're, you're, it, it looks good. You guys are polished, but you're in a very, very crowded space. And you're competing against companies with enormous marketing budgets, and I don't see anything that, that distinguishes you from them at this time. And without a two-tier distribution, I'm out. Right. I, I, I was going to say, on uh, your your advertising and the, and the social media that you've provided, even prior to the show here, throws out big numbers that attract people. Seventy percent, seventy percent. If there's seventy percent in this, then I would have thought you'd have been proactive and been able to tell everybody here, including us masters, that there's not only 70% for the MSP, but there's plenty of fat cash in there for us to bother with recruiting, product awareness, and all of that for, for our agents. So just rethink this maybe and come back later on and, and you might be able to change this tide. I'll give you See some advice, yeah. Absolutely. And I will give you some free advice, which honestly, there's someone on stage that could really help you build a two-tier program, and then you could come back to us with a better value prop. I wonder who that is. another hint that would, their name <laughs> rhymes with? I don't know. Yeah, the key, I know. Thing, key thing for me, I guess, is this I know is, you mean me, Heather, thank you. <laughs> the key thing for me uh, really is how do you differentiate yourself um, between Basically, you know, companies that are leading Gartner Magic Quadrants, leading all the waves. It's really difficult for me. It looks like a very clean interface, mm -hmm. but it's hard for me to justify that, uh, even from a revenue standpoint, because that's being met. So um, I guess the other question I have is, what, what's your end game as a company? Um, is it to be, what, what do revenue goals look like? What are you trying to get out of the distribution model? What's the future look like, look like for you in five years as a lot of these companies start to be consolidated? Sure. So we're in it for the long run. You know, obviously we're, we've been a company since February. So we are in pre-revenue stage right now. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, be surprised to say that our revenue goals are going to be, you know, $5 billion market cap. Why not? You know, the other providers can and are doing that or marching towards that. Um, you know, and I'm sorry, what was the follow-up question? What's the end goal in five years? To continue to do ring logics, right? To continue to provide this to resellers. Like I said, the marketplace is changing in that way where consumers want to buy in that avenue. I would be surprised if any other, uh, you know, normal vendor would be able to do that because they want to have the control. They want to have their logo on it. They want to build their equity. They, if they go to the website and anything, they have a buy now option. Partners don't have that. I don't know how much right. time we have we're left good. with him. but Yeah, we're good. 30 seconds. If you've got seconds. anything else to say. I would give you my time to help you with some additional questions that I don't think that you've asked. And we don't have time to ask about marketing and, and other areas of your business. 
who's going to who's going to control ownership of all that branding? Is that us, or is that you? When we bring you a hundred, two hundred, five hundred agents, and they all have to be branded differently, who's supporting that back end? Because we don't need to take on the overhead, and you haven't thought about any of the money that goes you know out of our pockets to do those kinds of things. So we currently provide that support, and we'll continue to provide that support. All right, good last answer. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to Dante. Very nicely done as our first up. You may exit the stage and leave me the microphone. I'm taking the germy risk of using the same microphone for all of the speakers. Okay. Uh, so that was great. And I'll just point out to everybody watching this, what's amazing is the amount of advice here on this panel. This is millions of dollars of salary, I'm just going to call it, sitting up here on the stage to get the free advice like this. Um, you would, you know, as a shark... Uh, it's an amazing uh, thing that you guys just did. So uh, we're not going to you know, let you get away with it. We're going to bring up our next uh, contestant. I have a little bit of a, uh, of a fun part here because the next contestant shares a uh, Dutch heritage with some of my family. So uh, I'm going to welcome to the stage our friend Erwin from Speak Up and give him a microphone. You have five minutes. Thank you. Um, Hi everyone, my name is Erwin. I'm the co-founder of Speak App, and I started this company about eight years ago in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, where I'm from. And at that time I was still studying at the university and I had a part-time job in a supermarket. And in that supermarket I experienced how difficult it was to communicate. Because the people that work in retail are not sitting behind a computer, they don't have a business phone, they don't have a business email address. So we used a lot of paper and text messages and phone lists to communicate. And that actually brought me on an idea to make that better. That's the starting point of Speak App. So what we develop is a branded employee communications platform. And currently working for over 400 clients in retail, in hospitality and manufacturing. Companies like Nike, Ikea, McDonald's use my product to communicate with their staff, their deskless staff. And why those clients chose our product instead of the, a very crowded space that I'm at, like Slack, Facebook Workplace, Yammer, and you have dozens of those, is because of these four USPs. The first thing, it's a branded app that you allow the employees to install on their private phone that empowers your brand on their phone every day. Number two, we connect with HR systems and we allocate people in the right location, their store or their team, automatically, and making information relevant. Number three, we integrate with tools like Kronos, e-learning tools, survey and feedback tools, because the people in retail don't want to use Skype or Office 365, let's say because those are desk-based type of solutions. And last but not least, we also adapted our tool for the American market, for hourly workers specifically, so we have an FLSA compliance pack. So this is an example, Wawa, one of our clients that will be rolling out the, the solution anytime soon, they implemented it as the Wawa app for their employees. And this shows how we can tailor information to the right audience. If you want, sen want to send something to only the people in New Jersey, you can do that, or only the shift leader in New York, or all the shift leaders across the country, and make sure that the information goes to the right audience. Integrating with over 80 uh, solutions already that are focused on the deskless workers. So think about work schedules, survey tools, feedback tools, that are spe specifically the ones that we integrate with. We also built a partner program, because this is actually our primary route uh, for fast growth. So we have referral partners, we have reseller partners that also implement the solution and we guide them with the proper implementation. We also have the technical partners like the companies like Kronos, ADP and Workday. And what we offer these partners is a chunk of the revenue as long as the contract is active. 
thank you. I saw a number there. What was your highest revenue? Because the masters are going to be looking at that saying, is that enough of a cut for me to have agents? What was your highest revenue? It, it goes to up to 50% of the recurring revenue. To 50%. Okay, sharks, questions. Okay, so I this solution's awesome. Um, I, I know there's going to be heavy competition with some of our UCAS providers and you know Microsoft Teams, but I, it would be fantastic for us to have a software solution. Um, so I'm already in. I have questions though about what are you guys doing with the funding you got last year? Because I saw a huge influx of investment, right? It was 15 million or something like that you received. So what are the plans using that now and into the next year? Yeah, so we raised um, a pretty, uh, let's say big investment round last year. Um, we, two years before we were already profitable. Um, so, and this investment allows us to enter the North American market and facilitate with all the marketing and sales and uh, partner program costs involved. Um, probably that money will be dried up next year <laughs> because it goes fast. Um, so our plan is to raise a Series B next year, which is a bigger amount. How do you segregate private data from corporate data? How do you address privacy concerns? Yep. And what is your strategy to stay in front of yep. privacy issues? That, that was definitely going to be my question. A very good question. Um, the starting point of SpeakUp is in Europe, and as you know, we have GDPR. So privacy is a very big and important aspect here. So we have data processing agreements. We are GDPR compliant already for over two years, um, and we apply best practices regarding security, et cetera, et cetera, but that's definitely a technical document that I'm happy to share with you. And the ability to remote manage the application on end user devices, say an employee is terminated or exits, how simple is that process? How long does it take? What are the concerns with them grabbing company data, snapshots, you know, video, that kind of thing? Yeah, so we integrate with an HR system or an active directory, so we make sure that only employees that are active, that they can log in into the system. That's f number one. Number two, when you make a screenshot, nothing is anonymous in this platform because it has your name, your photo, everything attached to everything that you add. So basically those examples don't really happen as far as I know. The sharks are asking some tough questions and he's holding up okay so far, let's see. So, so, I, I, so does the application have built-in MDM or are you relying on another layer of, layer of MDM for deployment and pulling it back as Eric was describing, things of those nature, because you could end up in a litigious situation and the app could be evidentiary, how do you save it? Because it's on somebody else's potentially BYOD phone. Yeah, so we have clients that use MDM because they issue business phones to the employees, they install the MDM, and then we are, let's say, hosted in that container. I think we are already working with four or five of those MDM providers. But m more importantly, the, the majority of our clients have deskless workers, private phones, then an MDM tool is pretty difficult. So then we rely on the fact that we integrate with an HR system. Once a person is terminated or leaves the company, they can no longer log in into the application. So but you've lost, the, you've lost what's on their BYOD phone. You, you don't have the right to go back and get that unless you've done it through policy. So the one other thing before I crowd or uh, take up too much time, 50% of what? 50% of the recurring revenue, so. Which is what? Is it worth my while to go out ah. and sell a thousand of these to make some money or one of my agents to do so? So we have um, different options in the product and it varies between $3 to $7 a user a month. The bigger the company, the lower the price. So imagine that you have 10,000 employees that you sell it to then the contract value is probably like a quarter million recurring a year. So I'm going to ask the exact same question I asked before. Tell me about your two-tier program. Is a, a solution provider of our uh, integrator, system integrator, can go out and do this all themselves. Are they going to get the same program I'm going to get, or do you have a two-tier program already established? We don't have that established yet. Good luck. Thank you. So. <laughs> Jump in. My, my first job as a 15-year-old kid was in a grocery store, and I worked there for years. So I love the genesis. I love the story behind what gave you this idea. I think it would be very applicable. Um, so my core question is, how many people do you have in the channel currently? You have a, pro, a start of a program. How many employees are actually running that program currently? 
There's one, and he's sitting up there. Okay, and where is he located? In New York. Okay, so he is U.S. based. What's the plan to add additional people into the channel? There, there are plans. Let's say we are, because a pipeline filling up of the right partners takes time and start learning and pivoting, but to massively scale up this team once we see that traction is going to be hit. And we are already having the first signs that we get more and more deals through this um, a partner program by, so, the, by the help of Jonathan. Sorry, Karen, just real quick. I, I like the product. I like you. I'd love to learn more and be involved. So uh, I, I, let's I'm make in. it happen. Oh. oh, two sharks in. This is interesting. Okay. You, you actually need Two of Janet. the biggest masters. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, what, okay. We'll work on right. your program. It's well, good. He what's needs your a biggest, channel. What's your biggest technical challenge that you haven't solved yet? That's a very good question. There are lots of challenges because n not of a solution is never bug free or is because we build it, uh, f let's say, in phases, right? So I understand. What's I the biggest one? I would say adding live streaming to the platform and exposing it immediately to a half a million employees that could like immediately. Yeah, th that is definitely a very big challenge that we are currently investigating how to solve that before launching this feature. I'm also interested in continuing the conversation. Three sharks. This is a personal best. Maybe four. Quick question. Is it fair to say that the AD apps on there, the integration component has to do with the properties like AD? So user information can be passed back and forth and that's the integration. I mean, we probably don't have enough time, but are there other integrations that elaborate beyond yeah, user, absolutely. user IDs and passwords and things yeah. of that nature. So from the 80, I think about half are about uh, user management related. Okay. The other half, uh, we have an integration Groups with... Groups and rights and permissions and, and co things. Correct. Like. But we also have an integration with Salesforce showing to a store manager real time what their revenue is and how many customers were at their store today. Um, but also survey and feedback tools, instead of sending an email to a deskless worker, can you fill in this survey once per year, do that 12 times a year, but shorter. So those integrations we also see on our platform. So if you have a Salesforce integration, then couldn't it be true that you could also have notes and auditing that would come out of each one of these 20 devices seconds. into a database, which would give yeah. you some of the characteristics that we're asking for from a compliancy perspective? Yeah, that, that could yeah, be. I, I'm in. Let's continue to talk. Okay. All right, four sharks in. Let's give a round of applause to Erwin from Speak App. Amazing, Thank really you. cool. Uh, a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. On behalf of our country people, respect. <laughs> um, my husband will be so happy because he always tells me Dutch people are the smartest people in the world. So there we go. Um, okay, so that was great. So uh, how many sharks were saying good to Speak App they wanted to talk? One, two... Three, four, that's amazing. Okay, that, that is what you want to hear. And by the way, if you're sitting here in the audience and you're a supplier uh, or you're a partner, I think the two things we've learned, right? One, uh, these are some really great experts. They know what they're doing. If you're a supplier, you need a two-step distribution program. Selfless plug, I can help you. Um, and then, and thank you, Heather and Karen and, and yeah, everybody for the plugs. Uh, but more importantly, what I heard was they're really defending their partner's business too. And I don't want that to be glossed over here sitting in the room. Um, the, these guys and gals every day fight for their agents or their resellers to have good margins, to have a good business, to have a good solution. And so they weren't just asking questions about the money. They were also asking, how do you protect data? How do you look about your strategy? How do you support the brands of our partners? So I think that was really great to see um, from this panel here. So next up, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We've got our next guest coming up. George is coming up from Vendesta. We are a Canadian-based company. And uh, about three months ago, Kevin O'Leary actually was a keynote speaker at our uh, annual convention. So he's vetted this presentation. I just want to throw that out there. Um, so I'm here for two reasons. We have a marketing technology stack that we have been selling to 2 million local businesses around the world. We're in 20 different countries. And I'm looking for a strategic partnership. I would like to add more products and services that these 25,000 salespeople that we have in our platform could sell. And I'll explain that in a few moments. We have 17,000 cloud brokers around the world. Some of those might just be a single operator, and some of them might be some of the biggest media companies that you are used to dealing with. 
80% of our revenue comes from the United States, and we are actively pursuing partnerships in South Africa and Australia. So I'm looking for an international strategic relationship. We know that local businesses face an enormous amount of challenges. They spend about a third of their time, if you were a dentist, it's amazing when you look at these stats, they spend about a third of their time doing their craft or the thing that feeds their kids. They're getting inundated by a number of people trying to call them and sell them things. And there's over 5,000 items just in the marketing technology stack alone. But what we are hearing from local businesses around the world is that they want to deal with one trusted provider and they'll buy more and more things from that trusted provider. So that's what we are all about, is helping local businesses solve the challenges that they face every day. We began our business in the marketing technology stack, and we have solutions that align to each one. I like to call these swim lanes. So you have advertising, you have whether the business is listed properly, you have their online reputation, social marketing, their website solution, and then loyalty. Will they advocate for your business? And we sell these white label solutions through a channel partner model. We started in marketing technology and we're being dragged into this space. That's why we're at this event because our marketing technology partners, which are media companies and agencies are saying, give me more things to sell. So we've started to add productivity and protection and training and enablement. And we'd like to move further across this, the, the uh, spectrum to add other solutions. So my ask here is a little bit different. We have products and services which are white labeled and can be sold to local businesses and to major brands, but we're also looking to add more products to the stack for our 25,000 salespeople that have a login to our platform to sell. So we have recently contracted a consultant that will help us build out a two-tier model to address your concerns that you uh, brought up earlier. Just Man. yesterday. <laughs> but I will tell you that we do not sell direct. We only sell through a white labeled manner and through our partners. So we're very familiar with building a solution that works for those partners so that they can have something that differentiates themselves in the market. I'm also prepared to offer a 30% commission as long as the customer continues to pay. So into perpetuity. And I've left quite a bit of money on the table to perform some marketing because at the core of our platform, we can use the publicly available data of any business in the world to send marketing material to that business to tell them about some of the challenges that they have around their virtual doorway. And that technology is what separates us from other point solution providers because we're utilizing that information to drive demand for the sales reps that are dealing with that customer. Not just demand though, it also gives the salesperson a roadmap as to what problems the business needs to solve. So that is my ask. I'm looking for a strategic partnership. We have all sorts of dollars in the table that we can pay to make sure that the, the salespeople are motivated. We also have all sorts of dollars in the table that we can use to make sure that there's demand, but I'm also looking for other products and services that our 25,000 salespeople can sell. So, so this is kind of like Amazon Angie's list combined. It's an Angie's list where they can come in and find out about the products and get ideas and suggestions and but then it's also like Amazon where you can go and actually procure products. Thank you. That's a compliment. I'll take that as a compliment. Yes. Would it also be fair to say that it's a Vibio? I would tell you that if you go to our website, you'll see a Vibio logo there, one of our partners. Understood. So I'm a little bit different than the other sharks here on the stage. I have this channel of 25,000 MSPs. How can I... How can my channel take advantage of the products, services, and solutions that are already being sold in your platform without introducing new products, services, and solutions? How would you answer that? I, I want to understand that question a little bit more. So do you mean that the 25,000 um, individuals you're referring to could use those solutions for their own business? Sure. Is there an opportunity for them to say, oh, my client could use many of these products and services. Do they have an opportunity then to represent a white label version of this somehow so that they can fill those gaps in their, in their existing client uh, organizations. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So that, that's what we're offering is something they, they could use it for themselves to market their business better. And a lot of our partners do that, but we are, we are more interested in them selling it to their group of SMBs or their brands that they work with. So I'm in. Can the MSP go in and look and see who's, who is seeing their, their website, their, what, what they're doing, what type of applications, what type of stores are they going to, so that they have some analytics to maybe proactively reach out to them? 
Correct. There's a number of ways that um, an agent or a sales rep or um, one of your um, sub-agents could find out what the business is interested in. So the one way is they can log into the platform and see it. But the other way is we send them an email whenever they interact with the demand gen that we send out. I like to use the term demand gen, but it's not marketing. It's actually information about the business that is valuable. So we are sending items out to these businesses on a daily basis saying, oh, here's a review that you received. But it's all branded by the organization. And it's kind of that idea of I'm going to give you something for no charge. I'm going to give you some value. And then I'm going to come in and solve the problems that we've identified. So it's tied around analytics. That's interesting. So how do you vet the solutions that you put in your portal? Like you're looking for more solutions, but how would you vet them? So what we would like to know is that there, there is a market. Because we get phoned all the time for people that want access to that distribution. But they have to prove that they actually have a market and they have something that can be sold. The other item is if there isn't some marketing against it, like if the marketing story hasn't been developed, then we're not quite interested. We, you know, we tell lots of people, come back in six months when you get this figured out. What does your channel ecosystem look like today and what's the typical or, a, or an ideal channel partner for you? Well, we started in the media business. And uh, if you look at media companies, depending upon what type of media company they are, the traditional products weren't selling the way that they used to, so they started to add digital products. And then uh, digital agencies started to step up to the plate. So those were the two areas that we started our business. Um, also, we've started to have telecoms that have uh, reached out to us, mostly because they were in the directory business and they're looking to add to their stack. And we even have banks and financial institutions that are looking at adding MarTech to their to their stack that they're offering. And I'm going to give him an extra minute because I'm going to say this to everybody here. If you don't think the MarTech agencies are the biggest competitors we've seen in our industry, if you're worried that you're an MSP and it's an agent or you're a VAR and it's an MSP, it's not. It's the MarTech agents. They are coming into our space fast. So we have to get into their space just as fast to protect our sand. So I'll give you a little extra time. So. I, I, I'm intrigued, but uh, I, I think for me, because there's, you still have a long ways to go to be able to enable it within my channel, right? And so I think if, if we're going to give our time in helping you build that out, I, I wouldn't want it to be spread out across multi one of us across here, right? I, I, it doesn't have to be exclusive for a long period of time, but if I'm going to help build it, it's got to be worth my time and investment. I think there are a lot of overlays. I don't know if you know anything about Tolaris. Our, we started with leads. I think we understand demand gen better than any, anybody else in this space. We've got presence in Canada, UK, Australia, obviously based here in, in the US. But um, So I think there's intriguing overlap. I think we've got a good product portfolio that you could put into yours that our sellers could maybe use that you already have. Um, but I, I would want to not have it be shared with everybody else. Shark competition. I love this. I'm interested as well. <laughs> and we, we play in a little bit different field. So I, you know, I have some interesting partners too that absolutely one can use your service. And I have some ideas about how we could get more products and services into your platform as well. So I would love to continue the conversation. I'm also interested in learning more about it. Me George, too. speak to us about but governance. I only want to be the, I want to be the exclusive with, distributor as well. With 30 seconds left, raise your hands if you are if you want to continue the conversation. Speak to one, us about two, governance three, four, five. real quickly. Okay, we got a 100% interest <laughs> across the sharks. Go ahead. I, I promised them one extra minute, so go ahead. Governance, how do you make sure that your suppliers or, or your, your partners are delivering those services? How do you vet them? How do you ensure that you're maintaining a you know, um, a, a highly regarded and, and um, well-referred or, or um, ecosystem, right? So they're not doing bad things right. with, the, with the software. It's a very difficult challenge when you have 25,000 salespeople out in the street. To sell, tell you that I don't have salespeople in that group that are over-promising and under-delivering, I can't tell you that because I know it probably happens. But what we do know is that when they offer the solutions the proper way that they've been trained and they set the proper expectations, we see that the retention is very strong, three to four years on most of the products. We've done a very in-depth study of over 200,000 businesses in the United States and we can show what led to the retention of those customers. Now, when it comes to other items like GDPR, we are actively pursuing GDPR across our entire stack because we have a customer in Czech Republic and a number of customers in Germany that want to use it. So that work is being done right now. Um, and it's a big focus for the next 12 months to bring that across the finish line.
And is there a rating system in there so folks have choice and can identify and look at reviews and things like that? Q1. Real okay. quick, how are these offerings priced? Are they bundled and packaged, <laughs> or are they generally Last question. generally one-offs? So if you go to the Miami Herald right now and you get a, co a phone call from a Miami Herald sales rep, they'll probably take some of our products and put it into an ad buy. So they'll bundle it into the ad buy. But we have all sorts of organizations that just sell the solution. So Single Platform is a partner of ours out of New York in the restaurant space. They sell reputation management, just one of our apps for $49.95. You can see it right on their website. So it's sold in a number of different ways to answer your questions. All right, so good question. What I'm hearing here is uh, both the Disties and the Masters can help you manage that governance. So we'll talk more about that later. Okay, let's give George Vendesta a big round of applause. All of the sharks took his solution. You, uh, the microphone is not a parting gift. Um, you did win, you, you have won so far with the most sharks, but it is not a parting gift, okay. Uh, so moving on to our last and final presentation. So what have we learned? I just want to tell you a couple things we've learned. One, we've learned it's okay to you know give little gifties to the, the sharks. I think that's nice. Um, two, we've learned having a two-step distribution channel. You all know I'm a big believer in that. These folks can help get these solutions out here. They can govern those solutions. Again, if you're a supplier listening to this, listen to this advice. Um, it's not just about the solutions. It's really about enabling the channel. And so with that, we're going to bring up our final participant, Amy Luby from Sensorium with Risk-Free IoT. Amy, welcome to the stage. Hey, hey, thank you Five very much. Five minutes. All right. Did y'all get your bloodies? <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. our gift. Does anybody need a Bloody Mary <laughs> Anybody delivered? need one? <laughs> Raise your hands. Anybody. Over here. I'm um, in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got one taker. Um, so I'm Amy Luby. I head up channel for Sensorium, okay? Um, Everybody has probably heard about IoT, Internet of Things. Um, we all know it's a big opportunity in the channel today, um, but we also know that there's a lot of complexity and disparity in the IoT space today. So as I was thinking about how to explain what we do and how we do it, I thought, well, what IoT needs today is a Jennifer. This is Jennifer. And she's a real person. She's actually our office manager. Um, our HQ is based in Austin, Texas. Um, and Jennifer sits and makes our office run seamlessly. We're productive. We know what we need to do every day. As I was getting ready to come here, Jennifer arranged everything for me. My flights, she knew that I have status on United. She knows I like an aisle seat. She booked my hotel. She knows I hate being next to the elevator, that I've got status at Marriott. She booked my ride here. She put it all together in a checklist to let me know what I needed to do, when I needed to do it, and where I needed to be so that I could focus on what I do best, which is talk to you guys. My favorite thing to do in the world is talk to partners. Um, I live and breathe in the channel. I've been in the channel for a long, long time. But that's what Jennifer did for me, OK? So in the world of IoT, there's literally sensors for everything, OK? I mean, there's sensors that tell you that there's leaks. There's sensors that tell you if something's opened or closed, if it's moved, if it's vibrating too fast, if it's too hot, too cold. You Literally, there's a sensor for everything. There are thousands of manufacturers today. They're all creating good sensors. There's software that works with them. There's protocols that these sensors communicate on. And a lot of these protocols don't run on the IP network that our partners are used to running on today. So the complexity is there. There's strange protocols. There's, there's LoRaWAN, MBIoT. There's all these other things that we need to think about. So what Sensorium does is we put all that stuff together for our partners, okay? We've been in the business for a little over 10 years. Um, we know the sensors that are out there. We manufacture our own. We manufacture or build our own software. But we also pull solutions together and help our partners identify where their opportunities are today within their client base. Um, one of our biggest challenges that we're running into with partners is that almost every single one of them has an IoT opportunity in their client base today but they don't know it. They don't know the use case yet. So when we talk about supporting our partners, we talk a lot about education. 
pre and post sales support, supporting them after the sale, helping them with the deployments, helping them understand what the client need is and what the use case is, and where we can help them fit in to build that IoT practice. And ultimately, in a sentence, that's why we exist. We exist to help our partners establish and build their IoT practice quickly and profitably. Here's a quick example of one of our newest partners, okay? We just did this appointment. Actually, um, our head of IoT solutions is here in, in the audience today. His name is Robert. Robert actually went out and helped our partner do this. Um, this is an event center, okay? They've got three big coolers. Um, the most important one is the beer cooler. They serve about 2,500 people at, at their events, and so they've got literally tens of thousands of dollars of food and beverage inventory in these coolers today. So what we did was we helped our partner understand what the problem was within that organization, what their challenges are as a, as a food and beverage retailer, um, or provider, I should say, um, what the regulations are around that, because when you're serving, serving food and beverage, you've got to have it at certain temperatures, and if you don't, that's a problem. And you have to not only record that, but be able to report on it when your inspector comes in. And you need to be able to show them right away that you're doing it the right way. So three big walk-in coolers, three sensors to manage it, um, the uh, gateway to communicate with it. Literally, I think it took Robert 30 minutes-ish to get that deployed. This was supposed to be a 60-day proof of concept. The client said, um, I want this, what does it cost? So our partner literally made a sale right then and there. Out Super duper time. easy. Oh, am I out of time? Ah, all right, well that, co that covered our partner program in general. And let me tell you before you ask, definitely two-tier program, um, and in some scenarios, three, because at this point, as you all understand the channel, it's evolving. There's a lot of layers. Okay. I like three. So, Amy, let me ask you a question. So, I'm, This sounds great. It sounds like you're a solution provider, so here's where I'm confused. What is it that you need from us? What are you selling? Are you selling your services, and are you asking us to help promote that through our channels, or is there a different product that we're talking about? No, so, okay, so... We are part of a larger organization called Carnegie Technologies. Our IoT category, if you will, we actually have two businesses. We create our own sensors, our own software. The sensorium side of the business, think of us as a systems integrator. Because as we were going to market with our own sensors, we realized that, again, the use case, the, the, the understanding of where to apply this and that and how to do it um, was complex. And so we built sensorium to help our partners build that IoT business. So it's and IoT so, in a box. Essentially, yeah, except that's so somebody you're, else's brand. You're, you're, you're an outsourced IoT division for uh, an, an MSP. Yes, consider so, us your IoT business unit in your back pocket, so right. and that, we what, work for you. What, what right. verticals do you specialize outside of? Because heat sensors is really easy for everyone in this room to understand, and I know that's why I used it. But the problem I don't really have is partners asking the question. I don't have that issue. They're hot. They want to work in IoT. Mm -hmm. the, the issue comes, can someone actually provide a solution to that vertical and have creative ideas for that customer when they're starting to say, I might want to do this for my business. How do you guys help in different verticals? And what's, I guess, what, what would be your top vertical outside of you know, food and beverage? So, so facilities management is, is a big category, if you will, that crosses a lot of different industries. So that's probably the biggest, at least, that we're running into at the moment. Refrigeration, that type of thing, it, it crosses everything. But our goal is exactly that. You know, we've been doing this for 10 years. So we know the sensors, we know the protocols, and we know the use cases. So when partners come to us, they're like, yeah, I get IoT, I understand what it is, I wanna sell it, but I don't know what customer A would need. So we help them figure that out. And then generally the motion is we go in with a proof of concept and we say to our partner, hey, let's just go in and put a small proof of concept in there and show them what it is. And frankly, generally that works. So you know, they end up with a sale. So you can do the hardware, the software, the interface, everything. Correct. How, many, how big is your company? How many employees? So the whole organization, we have about 250 employees. How many are dedicated to the channel so, to interact? Well, um, I head up channel and I work for Carnegie, so mm -hmm. I work across all the brands. Um, but Robert and his team are all of, of IoT. There's probably six or seven of us. 
ish that are dedicated, engineers, um, support folks, and then we have a marketing team also that's part of that. So how many partners do you have, Amy, and how how are you going to scale this? So we are technically a startup. Okay, I joined and and built the program actually after our company engaged Janet and her team. So our company engaged Janet and her team, established a partner program, and then I came in to work full time to actually build it out. Um, so we ha we just have a handful of partners today. So what we're focusing on until the end of this year for sure is agents and MSPs. That's where our focus has been, and we'll ex expand that as we start to grow. So What's your Amy. I've got extensive experience in IoT. I've spoke here on it before. I come from the Motor City. Autonomous vehicles are probably the most popular IoT device in the world. Smart cities, smart buildings, agriculture, oil, gas, healthcare. I mean, they're all out there. Wearables are coming. So I'm totally in on the IoT piece. I'd have to look at the program to see whether or not it allows enough margin, whether or not you've got enough process in place and marketing and everything else so that we could facilitate introducing you into our agents and then we could all prosper through that, that process. So our first shark is I'm at in. the table. I'm okay, in. first awesome. shark in. And that's exactly what we're looking to do. You know, we really, we need some strategic partners right now that understand that we're, we're started, yep. but we're not fully mature yet. And right. you know, we, we know we where we need to package go. package this. We, we may not be able to represent it out on our digital platform mm -hmm. because it's not as a la carte as give me A and 10 of B you right. know, but you know, right. we can get there. And therein is the complexity, right? That's, that's what we're hoping to solve. Um, I'm in also because I think that this is something that the MSP community and the solution provider community, they're looking for help for that. I mean, they don't have the, they don't have the, the people power to be able to um, develop the products, the sensors, to come up with everything, but their customers want them to be able to manage it for them. So I, I think it's a great product. I, I'm definitely Two interested. Two in. Awesome. So uh, I'm with Ingram Micro. We just held our first IoT summit in Irvine, California last week. Um, I'd be interested in making a connection with our leader for that business. But my ask of you would be to review Ingram Micro IoT and the marketplace we've built to see how we can align and you know what solutions can we build together. Perfect. Well, awesome. Absolutely. Three in. Three big. Four. Ten seconds or less. Nah, maybe. I, I'm not in or out. I have too many questions to, to ask and answer here. Um, and I've got an IoT div, uh, team that, that would ask those and answer. So my, my challenge to you would, it would be to come to them with what makes you different, what's unique, and what, why, why would a customer choose you over AT&T and Sprint? Perfect. That's fair. I'm also working with a few large IoT players, more on the identification and detection of all of the hundreds of devices that can be in an environment, right, Amy? So, mm -hmm. where do your, you know, where does your, where, where do your sensors stop, and where do you see a gap between, uh, you know, managing and monitoring what you do, along with the rest of the IoT devices, and then I'm also interested in making connections with you, for mutual gain. What, okay. One last comment from um, XS1. Go to IoTTechConnect.com, and you'll okay. see the depth of the IoT commitment that our distribution company has. Okay. And I think you'll feel the comfort. And Perfect. Let's, let's Should I repeat further. my question? No, no, no. I kind of sort Ooh, of a little snarky it. sharky. Okay. <laughs> Erg. All right. So, so where do we see gaps? Um, the, the real gap is understanding where these sensors apply. And, and what is the problem that's being solved? That's the real gap. I mean, I spoke to a partner a couple weeks ago, a, a well-known MSP. Um, most of you would probably understand, or, or not understand, um, uh, recognize their name. Um, their verticals are healthcare and manufacturing. And he said to me, and he's super smart, he said, you know what, I'm tired. I'm tired of, you know, all we do, our only value is the number of tickets that we manage, right? That's, that's our only value today. I need more to go to the table with. And IoT could be that answer. But he said, you know, I get the healthcare bit, you know, where IoT can apply, but I don't think my manufacturing customers would need it. <laughs> okay, so that's huge, right? Wow. So, so the biggest that's gap a good I see closure. is closure. Twenty yeah, seconds. Education is is the biggest gap right there. You know, otherwise there's sensors to solve most problems. So, Amy, I'm with Tech Data. I am also in. I would love to make an introduction to our IoT team. We have a pretty robust practice builder program around IoT awesome. for our partners, okay. and I think you would be a good fit within that um, ecosystem. Perfect. I right. love it. So, sharks that are in, or at least have more questions. 
All right, it's pretty much the whole panel again. So big round of applause for Amy. Awesome. Way to bring game to the last presentation. Thank you for joining us on the stage. Thanks, Janet. Don't forget your bloodies before we cut down. Yeah, don't forget. All right, I'm taking the germy microphone back. Don't worry, I have germ killer in my back pocket. All right, so just on behalf of all of us, on behalf of Channel Partners and Channel Futures, uh, the JS Group, and all the great firms that are up here, I'm going to ask one final question of the Sharks to wrap us up. They saw four presentations, right? And in everything in life, there's a winner and there's a loser. And we saw some people get, you know, all of them. Some people got three. Unfortunately, um, one got, I think, one or none. But was there anything, Sharks, that was a category you didn't see that we should bring to the shark stage when we go to Vegas? Because we really want to get you guys back on the main stage and bring some folks up so that even more people can learn about this. So any kind of solution category you wish you'd heard about? Security. 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 <laughs> Business intelligence. Business intelligence, security. BIAI. BIAI. As a service, give me some new niche products that we can introduce into the marketplace that are as a service. All right, so for those watching the video uh, from home and or here in the audience, if you're in that category, don't forget to apply for our next Shark Tank when we head to Vegas. Again, on behalf of everybody, let's give a round of applause for our sharks. They were amazing. Woo! Thanks for joining us, guys.